real quick, y'all. I want to give y'all one thing for y'all, all right? Proverbs 14 and 1. What's the, what's the importance of a woman keeping the commandments of God? Say it one more time for me. I can't hear you over the speaker. All right, I got you. You're not wrong, right? But the thing, the main thing I want y'all to think about is women always support something, right? They say behind every strong man is what? A strong woman, right? So in order for a nation to move in the direction it's supposed to go, it starts with mothers. It starts with wives, right? That's how it starts. So if our women, right, if a dude is gangbanging, for example, right, and you tell him, hey, go bang the block. I'm going to be home. I'm going to make sure you eat. I'm going to hide the gun. Guess what he's going to keep doing? He's going to keep gangbanging because that's what he's being supported in. Right? Proverbs 14 and 1. The book of Proverbs, chapter 14 and verse 1. Every wise woman buildeth her house, but the foolish pluck it is down with her hand. So a wise woman understands that keeping the commandments of God, you're going to build your house. Why? Because your son is going to say, Mom, how do I deal with women? You say, let's go in the Bible and I'll show you, son. Your son will say, Mom, how am I supposed to be with people when I'm at school and they give me a problem? You go in the Bible and you show him. Right? But right now what we do is when somebody fights your son, you say, beat his ass, and if you don't beat his ass, don't come home. You just made a gangbanger. That's what you just did. You destroyed your house. Because now your son says, hey, I beat his ass. Why don't I beat somebody else's ass? That's what he learns, right? You with me? Read it again. Every wise woman builded her house, but the foolish plug it down with her hand. Give me uh, Titus 2. So women, right, are supposed to learn the commandments in order to teach the next generation. Now, a lot of times women see us out here and they're like, where are your wives? Our wives had the most important job. Why? Because a building doesn't stand on its own. We might come out here and teach y'all, but y'all have to teach the next generation. So if you don't know what to teach them, you destroy everything we're doing out here. Bring it's out. very important for y'all to keep the commandments. Right. Titus 2 and verse 2. The book of Titus, chapter 2 and verse 2. That the aged man be sober. So this is talking about the man, right? The man would be sober, right? It's important. Listen to this. Read. Grave, temperate, sound in faith, uh -huh. and charity, and patience. The aged woman, like what? Now the Bible says the woman was supposed to do everything her husband does. So her husband has a very important job. He is not exempt from keeping the commandments of God. He keeps them and then his wife learns from him. What happens in our community is a lack of order, right? We have a broken cycle. What happens is you teach a little boy, that little boy grows up to be a gangbanger. He doesn't know how to be a good dad. He doesn't know how to deal with women. Women are broken by that, and they teach their sons exactly what they shouldn't teach them. They teach them to be that gangster. They teach them to be that whoremonger, that adulterer. So your job is very important. Unless you know something, you can't teach it to somebody else. Keep reading. Watch. So the woman was supposed to be like a man. So it starts with the man, and then the woman will learn it. Read. As we come in holiness, not false accusers, not giving too much wine. Teachers of good things. Teachers of good things. See, teachers of good things. Now, what is good according to the Bible? Bring it up. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Huh? The commandments? Okay, what you think good is according to the Bible? Say it loud for me because I got this in my background. Okay. The Word of God. Okay, what's good according to the Bible? Be a good leader. Okay, what's good? What's a good thing we should teach? Be an example for the kids. Now, look what the Bible says, right? Y'all were right, but let's read it in the Bible. Watch. The book of Romans, chapter 7 and verse 12. Wherefore, the law is holy, the commandments holy, and just, and good. The commandments of God were that good thing. So when it says be a teacher of good things, amen, you would take your kid and you would pull him to the side and you would say, hey, I know you had this problem with your wife, right? Or, or the woman you've proven or whatever's going on with you, but apply this commandment. I know you want to fight, but you can't be angry. Be angry and sin not. You would teach your kids that. Did your parents teach you the commandments? Your grandma did? So your grandma, when you did something wrong, she said, hey, baby, let's open up the Bible and I'm going to show you what to do. Um, I guess not really said so it's like... Right. She was taught something, a whole... Method. Right, she was taught the wrong thing. Yeah, like I'm with you. Right, so... so this is what I want you to, what you said in the beginning is, is important, right? Your grandma didn't teach you the right thing. She taught you, she went in the Bible, but she didn't teach you, she didn't teach you the way to apply it, right? Okay, there you go. That's the part I want. Your grandma was lost. 
Did your did your dad or mom teach you the right command, the right thing to do? Huh? Okay, we gotta admit that first. Did your mom or dad teach you the right thing to do? No. That's what matters. When we know that, then we say, let's go ahead and figure out what the right thing is to do. Because if we don't, then the next generation that comes up after us, they don't know the right thing to do. I got a son, he's two years old. Guess what he says? He says, Bible, Bible, Bible. That's what he knows. Since he was young, that's what he knows. But if we don't teach our kids that, they don't know the right thing to do. Read that again. Wherefore, the law is holy, and the commandment's holy, and just, and good. Now go back to Titus. So the good things we were supposed to teach was the commandments, right? So we taught the commandments. I got you. I'm going to finish this one. You could go. I see you inching that way. I speak body language. I see what you're doing. You're ready to go. I'm going to bring you back, Cornelius. But I want you to know your role, right? Because you came up here, you learned you was an Israelite, then you go home, right? This is what happens to a lot of sisters. They go home and they say, I'm not finna go out on the corner and teach. So what's my role? Why, why does that matter to me? Well, you got to understand how important it is that you keep the commandments. That's why I wanted to share something with you before you went. Read that. That they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husband, to love their children. So you said husband. It wasn't plural. Wasn't plural, wasn't meant that you were supposed to deal with multiple men. Women are supposed to come out and deal with one man to, for their entire life. Yes. That's what was supposed to happen. We don't believe that. We don't believe that because the Bible just said you should have what? One husband. Read that again. What? To love their husband, to love their children, uh -huh. to be discreet, chase keepers at home. Chase and keepers at home. So a woman was supposed to keep the house. That don't mean you can't work, but you're supposed to take care of the house. You go to work, but your main responsibility is the house. Your main responsibility is teaching your children to be the best that they can be according to the Bible. It wasn't to be out here running the street, but what happens is we don't understand our roles and responsibilities from God. You see what I'm saying? Keep reading. Obedient to their own husband. Obedient to who? Their own husband. That's something that women don't like to do. When their husband says, hey, you can't do this, they don't want to hear that. Especially, yeah, there it go, there it go right there. That, that neck row, get that on camera for me. Do it one more time for the camera. That's what our sister do. Husband says, hey, don't do this. Sister go, hell no, nah, I'm not doing that. That's right. right, you know. That's what happened, right? She threw it right there, right? Read it again, watch. Obedient to their own husbands, that, that, word of, that the word of God may not be blasphemed. Now, if you don't do that, if you don't listen to your husband, the word of God is blasphemed. That means it's not true. You're making the Bible to be a lie. Wait your up, job man. is very important. When the kids see you, they say, is mommy keeping those commandments? And then mommy says, hell no, I'm not going to keep the commandments. Well, the kid says, the Bible's not true. Just like you said about grandma. Something was off. Because you knew what she was telling you she wasn't doing. As a child, you can pick that up. So women, if they do not apply the commandments of God, they destroy everyone. They destroy the young women because they look at mommy. They destroy the young men because they look at mommy. You build a house. So you have the opportunity to build your community or destroy your community knowing who you are now. Right. That's your opportunity. You got to look at that and say, I'm going to hold on to this with everything I got. I'm going to build my community. Proverbs 31. And I'm going to bring you back, Cornelius. Proverbs 31. Look at this. Look at some things you could do. Proverbs 31. We're going to start at verse 3. Watch. The book of Proverbs, chapter 31 and verse 3. Give not thyself. Jump down. Give me verse... 10. Verse 10. Who can find a virtuous woman? So this is, this is Solomon being talked to by his mother. His, this is what his mother taught him. This is important, right? Who can find a virtuous woman? What's virtuous? It's important. You don't know? What's virtuous? Huh? Loyal? Loyal, loyal. Being loyal is a virtue, right? They're characteristics, right? A virtuous woman has a lot of good characteristics. You with me? Read it again. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband does simply trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of his life. So Solomon's mother said his wife was not supposed to do him evil all his life. You think your husband get pissed off when you cuss him out? You're doing him evil. If he go to work all day, and the white man is cussing him out and on his back and he about to lose his job. And then he comes home to you and you're supposed to be helping him out and you in his ear like, hey, did you pay that bill? Why you ain't do this? The kid, this happened with the baby. See, he getting frustrated while I'm doing it. You got to realize you're destroying your man. That is destroying your house. Read. See, she just nudged him. He looking like, damn, that happened to me yesterday. Read it again. <laughs> she will not do him. 
She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh a wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant sh uh, ships. She bringeth her food from afar. So it says she seeketh wool and right and she sows. That's what it was saying. Do you know how to sew? I mean, I'm not a crochet. You know how to crochet? Okay, it's a start. You know how to sew? Okay, that was a skill that our woman had. Why? Because we wouldn't have to go to our oppressor and buy clothes. Yes. Your husband didn't have a coat, you know how to yeah. make it from scratch. We need that in our community. Right. We need women that can make clothes from scratch. We don't have that right now. It says she seeketh, right? Women like to buy things, right? It says she's like the merchant ships. She goes far and brings back goods. You like shopping. You like shopping too. Y'all got matching jackets. I know y'all like shopping. You like shopping as well. A woman was supposed to go and shop for the best price and bring it back to her house. So if your husband said, hey, I want, I want this for the house, you were supposed to go and say, hey, uh, they charging this much over here, they charging this much over here, this is the best place to buy it so I can support my family. That's your role. You're using your skill for the wrong things right now. Right now you use your shopping skill to look good. You don't use it to build your community. So you gotta understand, you, have, you can read this whole chapter, right, when you have time. But the point is there's many things in here that y'all could do that'll change the way that black, Hispanic, and Native American communities look. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.